Episode 128 of the Parkrun Adventurers podcast is coming at you catchphrase free because we don't have that kind of creativity at this time of night. I am Mel of the clan Urbaka. I am on the Sunshine Coast and my co-host Scotty, who I believe to be in Melbourne at this present time, is also joining me. I am. I'm in Melbourne for one night only, Mel. I'm heading to Sydney tomorrow. Do you know why I'm going there? I do, actually. But would you like to share with everybody else? Well, it's the. Remember, a couple of months ago, I went to the UK for the Parkrun UK annual conference. And the reason I was there is to pinch all the ideas to put on show at the Parkrun Australia conference this weekend. I'm very excited. Kicks off on Friday. Yeah. It should be. A very, I'm hoping it's going to be a very entertaining and informative weekend. I have not had a lot to do with what's going on, so I'm, I'm going to sit back and relax and enjoy, Scotty. Good, good. I, look, I hope it's going to be entertaining and informative. My fingers are crossed, my toes are crossed that it is. Um, I've had a bit more to do, so I won't be sitting back and relaxing. <laughs> but you know what it is. It's, um, it's an opportunity for us to park run together in New South Wales again. Yeah. Which we may or may not be doing until next year at the Parkrun Adventurers Listener Meetup 2019. Mm. It's probably a, a good chance we won't parkrun together in New South Wales. I'm pretty confident there'll be another chance before then. Oh, yeah, they will. I've already booked flights to Victoria. Cool. Um, <laughs> For December. So that's that's coming up too. I told you last week we've got adventures planned up the wazoo. I'm actually going to be park running in New South Wales for the next three weeks. Wow. Look at you. Oh, no, no. For three, at least three out of four weeks in September, I think. So should we have a showdown? So it's a new event for both of us on Saturday. Do you want to have some sort of showdown? It is. Wes isn't coming, is he? You're not going to use that excuse? No, he's not coming. Well, what kind of showdown? What are you talking about? Like a, a race. Park runs a race every now and then, isn't it? A race between you and me. <laughs> oh, Scotty, 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 Scotty. Um, I don't need to use Wes as an excuse not to race you. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, if I wanted to race you, I would just get my henchman to knock you down so that I could run off ahead. I wouldn't play. I wouldn't play clean. I could tell you that much. <laughs> so I don't think you want to go down that that route with me. Look, it's remarkable how slower I've got with my drop in kilometres, weekly kilometres. It's it's remarkable how quickly you lose it, Mel, and how, how long it takes to get it. It's a cruel mistress, this running thing. Is this your nice way of saying that you, you're potentially as slow as I am at the moment? But yeah, it's a possibility. It's a possibility. Okay. Well, maybe if you are lucky, I will let you streak with me on the weekend. I'm not sure I will do that at Parkrun. However, on Sunday morning, if you're up for a little jaunt around around the place um, before the conference kicks off for the day. Sure. I'll put it in my diary. Okay. Just... And I'll, I'll try not to pull a Matt Fullerton on you and leave you for dust. Who? <laughs> exactly. Speaking of, you know what, um, this is not going to actually be, um, it's a new event for me, yes, however, I'm, I'm not achieving anything towards any of my other clubs that I'm aware of, although thank you to the several dozen people who um, got in touch with us about the Wilson Index last week after we had a chat yeah. and gave us step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how we could go and see how we are doing on the actual Wilson Index. And, um, yeah, that, that was much appreciated. And I'm glad to see – you know what you know what it is? It's, it's, it's good to see people are listening to us, Scotty. Good, I know. You know, some, sometimes – some weeks it's just everything's quiet and you just don't know if anyone even tuned in. But it's weeks like that where, you know, you make a bit of a foible, you, <laughs> you expose a weakness. A gap in your Toy Story knowledge? Well, yes, yes. Thank you also to the the large population of people who corrected me that Jesse is actually in Toy Story 2. Obviously, I need to refresh my viewing, especially if I'm going to play the character in real life from time to time. I, I did enter a club on Saturday in, in one of the new unofficial clubs. 
I went along to my Nendi. I got a G, which you know what that means, Mel? Um, Think about it. G's, what are what? G's good for? Well, G's are good for the Bee Gees Club. Got it. Yeah, unofficial Bee Gees Club. I don't mind the Bee Gees Clubs. You need three Bs you're, and you're three Gs. It. I'm in it now. You know what? Well, if that's the case, then Greenway may be my third G if I haven't. I know I've got one G already. I'm going to have to go looking through all my things again. Surely I've got enough of the Bs. Every event seems to be called started with a B these days. Well, it's an easy one to get, but I got uh, the BG Club, and, and I also ticked off my Nendi, who, which was actually quite close to me. It was only about a 20-minute drive away, so it was a bit of a luxury. I headed along to Gardner's Creek. Awesome. And now my Nendi's a bit further. It's a bit of a I, challenge. I can't remember the last time I actually did a Nendi. Well, it was probably when I did Nambour a couple of years ago. But you know what? I got a new Nendi on the weekend too, inadvertently. So tell us, tell us the story of your weekend and where you were, the mystery behind the event where you were. I didn't, I didn't, um, I did not get a new Nendi through my own pursuits in terms of I didn't go and do my previous Nendi and therefore a new one popped up. Uh, a new event launched on the Sunshine Coast at Majimba Beach Park Run, which uh, has taken over from what was the name of that? former... Majimba Beach. Majimba Beach. Haven't heard of that. No, you won't have heard of it because it wasn't on the calendar. It flew under the radar. We did what they do in the UK and we had a soft launch. Very deliberately, it's been in the planning stages for several months, um, but we didn't want the – and I know this is ironic. I'm on a podcast called Parkrun Adventurers, but we didn't want the adventurers and the tourists to know about it because we wanted the event to have a chance to settle in very quietly without a massive fanfare for their launch into their new location uh, because this is the event team that has moved across from town of Seaside Park Run, which is now closed and it has become the second event in Australia to close. So, yeah. Mm. And that all, that all went, I mean, obviously some adventurers still managed to sniff it out <laughs> and showed up anyway, which is fine. You know, people, um, in my experience, it's not, adventurers that cause um, a lot of issues necessarily. They're, they're not usually the fast, obnoxious runners that might get locals offside, that sort of thing. Um, they're just out there to have a nice, gentle, good time. Um, but obviously the congestion or potential for congestion, if there was hundreds and hundreds, um, was a real issue um, that we were trying to avoid. And we managed to avoid it quite nicely, which is very good. And I would still encourage everybody to give them a few months to settle in um, and just, just go along in dribs and drabs. Don't inundate them all at once. They're a very experienced event team, but the course and the locals um, need to adjust to the changes. And the saddest aspect of all of this, from my perspective, is that we've lost the town of Seaside, which means we've lost the tosses. <laughs> yes, we can no longer refer to the tosses on the podcast oh, because that's devastating. We don't, <laughs> we don't actually have a park run there anymore. No, but good luck yeah. to the team at Majima Beach. And you were on the tools on Saturday, so I presume everything went well. All the rules were followed closely, and everybody did the right thing. Is that yes, right? Yes, I was on barcode scanning, and even though. People didn't show up with their barcodes. They were all very understandable, and I didn't have a single person um, create any issues about the fact that we wouldn't add them in. Well done. That so was good. It was a good morning. Majimba Beaches? No. Nah. Madibids? Mid, no. Nah. Tosses was heaps better. <laughs> but so I, I, I completely hijacked your conversation, Scotty, because you mentioned you were at Gardner's Creek. What's the course there like? Obviously, I volunteered, so I can't give a course description, but... Oh, we're doing the course description thing now, are we? Yeah, well... We had a couple of weeks on with me now, and now it's it, we're just um, course descriptions every week. Um, um, could I just bring to your attention the fact that we've, we've always explained what the course was like after we've done a new event? Yeah, we've been doing that for two and a half years. Okay. I take Mr. that back High then. Mighty. I take that back. <laughs> Where have you been all this time, just like zoning out when we've had these conversations? I, I focus on some things. 
Okay. And, um, okay, course description at Gardens Creek. So I have done it before. I did the trial. This was back uh, in summer when it was warmer, I do recall, or early, earlier on in the year. Um, but it's, it's a nice little gravel. It's very flat. It's around a creek. It's around Gardener's Creek. It's a sort of an out and back loop. And what I do like, Trevor, the run director, he gets the big tick of approval from me because, one, he mentioned the podcast. Two, he mentioned Streaky September. And three, he gave a great wrap up for Warrior Run, which we had on Saturday. And he, he put his own little spin on it. And uh, I thought it went really well. It was a great, great event briefing from Trevor. Awesome. And all unsolicited. He didn't know you were there. You didn't ask him. didn't pay him. Not at all. Not at all. That's very cool. Speaking of streaky September, should we speak about that now or should we just save that for the end? Because we've got lots and lots of stuff to share. Let's break it up because um, good news, bad news. Good news is no guest this week because we're a little bit busy, a little bit pressed for time. It's just the Mel and Scotty show this week, but we do have a couple of roving reports. So let's go to them, Mel. Give the people a break. From our voices. From our voices, (laughs) yep. And let's hear from Dave Moss, our UK correspondent, and um, Lyndall was out getting her eye. So she was on her hunt for her alphabet. Channel 5 reporting from the Conrenny Community Woodlands, which is the alternate route for the Nobles Park Run on the Isle of Man. The reason that, uh, and that this is the first time they've used the uh, alternate course, and the reason for that is that over the next few weeks, the Manx Grand Prix bike race is on, and in effect it will take over the island. The, uh, the normal course takes place just behind the grandstand of the, uh, the Isle of Man races, which is the same, uh, same course as the TT race for those who are into motorbikes. A quick heads up uh, for the listener, the Isle of Man is located in the Irish Sea between Northern Ireland and England. Uh, it's not considered to be part of the United Kingdom, although that certainly has a lot of business going on there, and the United Kingdom is uh, responsible for things like defence and power comes from there. But uh, the... The people on the Isle of Man are very proud about being completely independent and you've got their um, uh, flags, their signs all over the place. Uh, and the, the flag is a bit unusual in that it's a picture of a, I think it's triskelion, which is three legs joined together at the hip. The other thing that the island's pretty well known for is the Manx cat, which is a, a tailless or at least stumpy tailed breed of cat. Um, and I hate to guess how it got that way in the first place. Either way, we're off to do the course. Um, this is a trail run, and I think it'll have a hill or two. And uh, touch wood, catch up with one or two people afterwards. Hello, and I'm with... Ian Bates, run yeah, director. You're the run director? Are you the yep. event director here as well Yes, at yes, most of it falls on my, in my lap. <laughs> Lucky you. Yep. And how long has Nobles been going for? We officially started back on the 17th of October last year, so... We are still new, although we are conscious that the um, our first birthday is looming. Okay, so you're about 10 months into it now. Yes. Okay. Yes. And what what got you starting? Um, <laughs> well, sorry, persistence, I think, is the key word. <laughs> um, I left the south of England and was lucky enough to find myself working on the island. Okay. Um, at mid-80s, I think I was 85 runs at that point on my local run, um, to come over and find there was nothing. Loads of events, but nothing free and nothing following the park run process. So it took a good nigh on 18 months of me being here to actually yeah. work around, get permissions, get you know everything sorted out, making sure that stuck in the middle of the Irish Sea meant that the insurance still covered us, bits and pieces, and quite clearly from the TT and the bike events here, Nobles Park was the focus of our attention. Yes, and I, I didn't realise that the actual course starts at the back of the grandstand. Yes. On the main, uh, yes, yes, we are in view of the start. It's unfortunate that we can't actually be there when the race is going on. It probably wasn't quite as noisy today as uh, when the bike race is on. Uh, a lot of huffing and puffing and stamping of feet, but <laughs> slightly different sounds. Yeah. You've got a, quite a few volunteers out here today, which is a good sign. Yeah, we do, we do. Um, with the temporary course as it is um, for the next four weeks, we actually half the number of volunteers required. But we're quite lucky on the island. We've got a very strong core group of volunteers. Um, so it's actually hard to turn them away from volunteering. 
um, it's good to see today there's a half a dozen of them that have had the opportunity to actually run today which is good and tomorrow there's a marathon and half marathon yes on. yes um, we have an event going on not us as in Parkrun but the island has one of many events that they do um, seven days a week it seems there is a half and full marathon which is two laps at Ramsey tomorrow yes and that starts off um, the no rest for the wicked week so you do the half or the full marathon on the Sunday then there's a mixture over the following five days of a uh, hill run a 10k, a seven mile run on different terrain that obviously the island offers and circulates the island as well. So for visitors and people staying, it's an amazing mix of road running, trail running, fell running, etc. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, brilliant. Lovely to idea. Great uh, Brilliant. All right, cheers. Yeah, thank you. Good morning, Park Run Adventurers. G'day, Scotty. G'day, Mel. It's Lyndall. I'm back reporting for the Channel 5 News crew. Um, fully inspired by last week's podcast, I have to say. I'm chasing an alphabet letter. I'm out at Ipswich Park Run in Queensland, so I'm going to get my eye. Um, I'm decked out in my IMF supporters singlet, so celebrating Warrior Run. And look, it's the first weekend of September, and I'm already pitching for the Christmas edition. So what more could you want, guys? Um, look, the run's probably about to start, so I'll uh, leave it there and catch up with some people after the run. Okay, after the run, and I've tracked down one of our milestoneers. Uh, I've got Mark here with me. How are you going today? Oh, I'm doing awesome. 50th, 50th park run. Excellent, and that's why you've got the red tutu yes. and a red cape. You're yes. looking stunning. Thank you. A whole lot of people <laughs> turned out in tutus. It was awesome. Yes. It was wonderful. I knew there was something going on when I turned out in tutus. I was a bit sad they didn't wear my own. <laughs> now, um, you're a regular here at Ipswich Park Run? Yep, born and bred in Ipswich and we do a run beforehand and uh, do a park run in Ipswich, it's fantastic. Excellent. Um, and 50, so how long has it taken you to get to your 50 runs? I started doing park run probably about 14 months ago, so I do it every week and uh, I just love it. Love the park run, yep. love the whole concept. Yeah, it's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and your running journey, can you tell me a little bit about that and how you got into running? Yep. I, I, I started the run when I was 52 because I was overweight. Uh -huh. And so I started the run, I lost 25 kilos. Wow. And um, just kept running and running and did my first marathon. And then was training for my second marathon. Then I had my heart attack. Oh. So heart attack, two lots of surgeries later. Yeah, wow. And I just decided I'm going to run, even though the doctor at the time said I wouldn't be able to run again. So finally I decided that uh, I wanted to run one more marathon. So two years to the day, almost, after I had my heart attack, I ran the Paris Marathon. And um, since then I've run a whole lot of halves, no more marathons, and I'm just loving life and loving, mar and loving the park runs. I just, just really do. Yeah. I've met so many friends that it is just something that I want to do every Saturday. So that's my running journey. Excellent, that's wonderful. And the running community here at Ipswich is quite an established community, I understand. There, there's, a, there's a whole heap of groups and it's so collegial in that sense that everyone knows each other, we see each other on the street, but it's a very strong running community yeah. and very much together. You know, yeah. we all cheer each other on and I just love it. How wonderful. Well, thank you very much for talking to me, Mark. Well done on your 50. Here's to another 50 in the future. Absolutely. Thanks, Linda. Now I've got with me Tom, today's run director. How are you today? How did today go for you? It was a pretty good day. It's first day of spring and you could feel the warmth in the air. Um, yeah, I think so far so good. Only a few missing barcodes. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> You're on the trail floor though, Tom, aren't you? I am on the lookout. <laughs> Those little bits of plastic in people's hands, yeah. They're very, they're very important. <laughs> Now, tell me about your parkrun journey. How did you get involved in parkrun and run directing? Well, um, my first parkrun was up in Cairns when we lived up on the Atherton Tablelands there. And I actually travelled down and stayed overnight just to do my first parkrun. It was a two-hour journey. Um, and uh, since then, I've moved back down here to Ipswich. And I uh, haven't missed many weeks since then. i um, uh, got my first... First place finish here at Ipswich, um, and you know, just really uh, enjoyed the community here. So then, slowly made my progression into photography, my first volunteering position, and then uh, run directing now, which I really enjoy. 
excellent. Now that clanging, clanging in the background that we just heard, can you tell us about that? Yeah, that's new this week actually. Um, someone's come up with the initiative of having a, a bell. But when people run a PB, they go and ring the bell. So everyone knows. So. Yep. So course, course PB. I understand. That's course PB, and we've heard it ring a few times already this morning. Excellent. So I've never run here before. Can I ring the bell? Um, technically not, <laughs> but um, I wouldn't. Would, there's no real fun. Well, we won't. We won't do, get you in do trouble. Do what you feel. It's an honor system, isn't it, in park runs? So you do what you feel right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> if you feel that you can do that, go for it. No, I think that that's a bit lame. <laughs> Now, tell me about the course here at Ipswich. My home run is Bunyaville, which is extremely hilly. Bunyaville, I've done that once. Um, enjoyed that course, actually. Um, did get lost on the way. But this course here, it's, it's a two-lap course, um, concrete paths, and it is known for the uh, heartbreak hill, a long, <laughs> slow hill with uh, many false finishes to it where it turns corners and continues going up. Um, and that's the part people either love or hate here. Um, I personally <laughs> which, quite like it. Which one was that? They all felt like that to me. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, there are a couple of hills just to warm you up for the, the big heartbreak hill. But then a long winding downhill to the finish. Um, yeah, great, great course, I think. One of the best I've run. It sure is. Look, hills are good for the soul, yeah? I think that's very true. I love hills. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you, Tom, for talking to me today. Thank you for your contribution to Parkrun. And um, hopefully I'll get out to Ipswich and be able to ring that bell next time. That would be great. Yeah, see you next time. <laughs> now, Kay is here with me. She is the event director for Ipswich and also one of the event ambassadors for the area. How are you going today, Kay? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for coming to our park run today. You're very welcome. I was on the search for an eye. And I love hills, so it was a match made in heaven, really. You earn your eye out here for your alphabet, don't you? We um, go to flat park runs, and we forget that when we go to flat park runs, we think we're invincible out there in the flat park runs, but we're not because we've got no recovery to come down a hill. So, I yeah. do the same thing. Every time I go to a different park run, I think, ah, oh, it'll be flat, and they're never really flat. They're not. Um, I went to New Farm Park Run last week, and I thought it was flat, and little do you know, there's some little tiny little creepy undulations in there. But um, we've got a really, really good community. Um, you can see park run's just about finished, and everybody is still... These are our core people that are still here till the end, and um, it's really more about yeah, we're a run, we're a community, we're a big family, if yeah. you like, yeah. yeah. It looks like that. It feels like that. There's lots of people talking um, and hanging around. Dogs, the volunteers, obviously, you've got a fairly um, loyal crew of volunteers out here as well. Yep, that's right. I um, one of the things that we're pretty good around at here is we've generally got a full roster three or four weeks ahead which is, and you put out the call, oh, look, there's someone Yay! rang the bell, they got a PB. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so we do. We've got a really good crew, and, and somebody will always put their hand up. Yep. Um, we started here when I took over as, um, I wasn't founding event director. I was, I took over in, um, Parkrun started here in 2014. I took over November 2015. So we've seen Parkrun grow from about 80 odd people up to some weeks we have about 230. Yeah, wow. So we've yeah. got, yeah. I was talking to one of your milestone runners earlier and he said that the running community in Ipswich is, is, a, is a tight and strong community. It is, it is. We, um, we've we got little different groups. One of our um, guys today who did his 50th, um, they have a group that runs, they call themselves the Wolf Pack. Um, <laughs> I don't know why. Um, Ipswich City Runners, we've got, it's just a social group of, of runners. Um, and we're, we're all a part of everything yeah. sort of thing, yeah. yeah. And a couple of really big fun runs out here a couple of times a year as well. Park to Park. Yeah. That's um, Ipswich Hospital Foundation were the um, local sponsor for Ipswich Park Run. They got us, um, they gave us the funding to set up Park Run. And um, so we always like to give back. I set up a Park Run team and um, we encourage as many people as we can yeah. to come out and support back. It gives a bit back to the, the Hospital Foundation. 
that's great. Yeah. What a great connection. Okay. Yeah. Um, and your parkrun journey, so you've talked about how you got into run directing. Um, you obviously run as well. So can you tell me a little bit about your running journey? Me, I hated running. Um, I was a hockey player. And um, 2014, when Parkrun started in Ipswich, my partner said, we should go and check that out. He couldn't run. I couldn't run. I couldn't even run 5K. So I think I was telling someone this morning, um, Since so in the last four years, I've um, done about 14 half marathons. And last year, I did my first full marathon. Oh, wow. Awesome. So, and I still can't run that heartbreak hill. <laughs> The old Heartbreak Hill. Tom was telling me about Heartbreak Hill, and I thought, which one was that? Uh, no, that's Heartbreak Hill. And you know, the um, some of the really speedy people. It's not well known, but you know, the fast finishers. You often see them at the top of that hill. They stop. They walk for about ten steps, and then off they go. So yeah. I wonder what the hell they're doing there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, Kay, for talking to me today. Thank you for all of the work that you've put into Park Run. Clearly, it's paid off with such a fantastic community out here. Now, I'm here with Gary. Gary is clearly the volunteer with the mostest. <laughs> he, as we talk, he is pulling down the clock. Yep. How are you going today, Gary? I'm well, and how are you today? I'm terrific. Now, I hear that you have volunteered over 200 times and never run a Park Run. I believe that's the case, yes. <laughs> So, my, my strengths lies. My strengths obviously lie elsewhere. Okay. Well, they. Well, clearly. <laughs> yes. Um, so, what is it that brings you to Parkrun? Uh, it's just a nice little community that's been built here. It's a lovely little group of people, and uh, uh, it's just um, it's just such a nice concept. It's a simple concept, and it's not a huge obligation or commitment just to come out for a couple of hours on a Saturday morning. First thing on Saturday, you know, first day of spring. Here we are. Out in the park. I mean, how nice is that? How good is it? It's lovely. <laughs> Absolutely. It's fabulous. Now, do you, you said that running isn't your thing and your talents lie elsewhere. Is there a particular volunteer role that your talent suits most? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, I, I, do, uh, I do timing tokens and uh, uh, event manager. Or whatever, yeah, the or whatever, run director. Run yeah, director, yeah. yeah. Yep. That's the three I like to do. Yep. Yeah. And have you been here since the start of Ipswich Park Run? Yes, I have. Yeah, the, the wow. young, lady, young lady who started it. Um, Rochelle Vaisnan was uh, is a very dear friend of mine, and uh, she um, she came back from England yep. to uh, for health reasons, so she came back to get better. And she'd seen Park Run in England and uh, bought it here and yep. did all the work, got the got it up and running. And so I thought I'll go and give her a hand, yep. and it's been here ever since. And you've been here ever since. Fundamentally, yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, well, that's great. Look, Park Run doesn't run without people like you. Um, thank you very much on behalf of all of the Park Run community, not just here in Ipswich. You're a shining light, clearly. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you very much. It's my great pleasure to be part of this, uh, this lovely little community that we've built here. I love it. Alrighty, Scotty, Mel, that's it. That's a wrap. I've had a very successful Park Run day. I've ticked off my eye for the Alpha Batir Club. I've kicked off Streaky September. And I've got myself back on your Christmas list. So, job done. I don't think there's anything else to say here, really. Um, until next time, this is Lyndall signing off for the Channel 5 News Crew on the Park Run Adventurers. The Channel 5 News Crew is on point today. What would you give that out of 10, Mel? Let's start rating the roving reports. <laughs> yeah, because that's not going to put any more pressure. <laughs> I give them a 10. I give them a 10 this week. <laughs> You know what, I'm especially excited that we, we got that audio from Dave at Nobles Park Run because he sent that through a couple of weeks ago. And congrats to Dave as well, who actually did his 250th uh, Park Run just recently in a couple of weeks. He snuck that one in overseas. Um, but he sent through the audio and technologically challenged me, was not able to figure out how to play it and I just like happened upon it this evening so I was very excited that it wasn't audio lost and that we could share it with everybody. Nobles in the Isle of Man it was it was, sounds like a very cool course. I give Dave a 10 out of 10 and I give Mel a 3. For my technology oh yes. well you know that that brings me that brings me no we can't talk about streaky September yet because we haven't done the anniversaries or the launches. Okay. So let's let's do that first, Scotty, and then we'll we'll dive into streaky September, which we know is the hot topic. Yes, we have no launches at the moment, so that's good. But we do have a couple of anniversaries. They are happening at Bega in New South Wales. 
Inverloch in Victoria, North Wollongong in New South Wales, and Wynnum in Queensland. So happy anniversary, guys. Hope you have fabulous costumes and or cake, if that is your poison. I did have cake last week, Scotty, um, but we, we did establish the fact that I was not giving up cake or baked goods. Yep. So let's let's touch on that now. So your your level up. Status extra, update. Yep. Status update <laughs> on your um your extra streak. So you, you remind us, remind us. Are you going to give up Skittles and chocolate? That that and wine and wine. I wine, forgot about wine. wine. Yeah, these are my major vices. Or well, no, not these are my major indulgences. But my indulgences have been leading to leading to bulgences lately, and. I'm having trouble fitting into my pants, which is the motivation behind. <laughs> like, I mean, a streaky September was always going to happen, but I just thought, you know, it was possibly an opportune time to also coincide, um, abstaining from some of my favourite things just mm. for a, a short period of while at least. And we'll, uh, whether or not it sticks, I don't know. I, I'm – I have been hungering. You know what? Of all the things, and I thought it might have been the wine because I I am very partial to a glass of red of an evening or two, and I thought that was going to be the hardest thing, but it's the chocolate. Really? It's the chocolate. And, yeah, and it's possibly because I ate Skittles to the point that my jaw was sore by the end of, of August. So, but, it, yeah, I just I just really want chocolate. I think about it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate, really? Yeah, just yeah, just mm, chocolate. Uh, but I, I am, I am four days straight. We are up to September fourth. We're we're recording on the evening of Tuesday, September fourth, and I'm four days clean of chocolate, Skittles, or wine thus far. Um, how are you doing, Scotty? You you. And this is the thing on a whim, and these things don't usually end well. But coffee, you said in solidarity that you would give up coffee for the month of September because I was giving up these big things for me. Did you have to bring up the solidarity? I don't think I said that. What? <laughs> no, I didn't use that term, but I felt like that was your motivation. Okay. Well, you read too much. Because it's into not it. like you. It's not like you to just come up with these things off the cuff, like bad ideas. That's my job, you know. Run the date my way. Yeah, that's yeah. a great idea. No, it's not. Let's do that in March. No, that's not a good <laughs> idea. That's more days in February. I have these ideas without thinking them through, but that's not you. That's not usually what you do. Yeah. Although so I feel like this one was a little bit <laughs> on that side of maybe I'm rubbing off on you. Do you think? Well. So we're up to September four, and yep. you sent me a picture on on September first of a hot chocolate. So you started out strong. <laughs> Before I reveal where we're at currently, I'll paint. I'll paint the scene. Okay. Um, September first was Saturday. We did the post park run thing, and I had a hot chocolate, mm -hmm. and that was that was a big letdown. That was hard to <laughs> deal with. Okay, so you started your day with disappointment. Yeah, but I got through day one. <laughs> day two okay. was was Father's Day, so we we went along. I was supposed to do a half marathon, but we were short of volunteers at Junior Park Run, and it was Father's Day meal, so I wanted to spend it with my daughter because it's Father's Not Day. Not running a half all. marathon. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so we okay. went to so we went to Junior Park Run, and I didn't do anything. I stood around. It was completely useless. It was quite good. And then we went and had some breakfast. So I'm sitting in, I got to choose, sitting in my favourite cafe. It's one of my favourite cafes because they do really good chocolate. Really good chocolate? I mean, really good coffee, really good coffee, really good coffee. Oh, see, so did you just say chocolate? Because I heard chocolate. If you said <laughs> no, coffee, I did say coffee. it's no, I did say possible because I still heard chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said, I definitely said chocolate. Okay, but I'm not going insane then. This I meant coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I meant coffee, so they do really good coffee. Anyway, long story short, I lasted a day because I wasn't going to not enjoy my father's day breakfast and part of that enjoyment <laughs> is derived from drinking a really nice coffee. <laughs> and I've enjoyed a coffee every day since just to, just to make sure I wasn't making a mistake. So, But I tried. Um, 
you, you got through one solid day. I'm proud of you, Scotty. Yep. You tried. I did. That, that is, that's the main thing. But you know what the beauty is? You can always start a streak on any day of the week, on any day of the month. You, you don't have to start it on the 1st of September. So if you want to, you can start streaking again with no coffee tomorrow. So there's the, there's the update on that. So I'm glad that wasn't part of Streaky Bingo. Streaky September. Oh, Streaky Bingo. Well, we yeah. haven't got there yet, Scotty. Well, there's my segue, Mel. That, that's your segue there. Yeah. Okay, well, we because we haven't given the status update on streaking. Are you still in the streaking game? Ah. You, you've struck every day. Streaking is going to be easy. Yep. Oh, it's going to be easy, is it? Well, shut up because it's not <laughs> easy for everyone. And on behalf of all those people who struggle from time to time, shush you. <laughs> I look, I mean, some days are going to be harder than others. Uh, tomorrow, I think, is going to be a challenge for me. I'm traveling a bit, doing a few little chores and errands and in unfamiliar surrounds, but I think I'll I'll sneak something in. Well, yeah, I should hope so. Yes. Otherwise, you break your streak. Yep. But we've but... been asked the question. We've been asked the question, is bingo yes. with an E going to return? And it is. Of course it is. It's tradition. We are not going to leave people without challenges to just mix it up a little bit throughout the month. And yes, Streaky Bingo is back. But we wouldn't we wouldn't be the Parkrun Adventurers if we didn't change it a little bit. So it's not the same challenges that we had last year. We've added some new ones. We got rid of some old ones. So we're keeping you on your toes. Upload the bingo card to Facebook in the group. Thank you to everyone who has joined the group for Streaky September. So we have a Parkrun Adventurers group. It's our first group, Scotty, yeah, which is exciting. a bit exciting. We started the month out uh, with the event in Facebook. However, Facebook is a little bit silly sometimes. And in this particular circumstance, I think it's a bit prohibitive in that they don't allow you to create month-long events. Uh, they only let you create day-long events. And short of creating a new event every day and asking people on Facebook every day to join the new event and then losing all the continuity from people sharing pictures and posts and experiences and motivation, we thought it was best to just dive in and create a group where we could have all those things kept together. And, you know, we can keep it for next year as well and it's always going to be there, which is awesome. Great. Great idea, Mel. So thank you to everyone who has joined the group thus far. And if you haven't, just get in there. It doesn't matter if you haven't started streaking yet. You can come and enjoy the fun. But we digress. What were we talking about, Scotty? Streaky well, bingo. Yes. Let's, go, let's, go, let's tell people what we've come, we've come up with. So the one thing yes. we've kept from last year, we've kept two things well, two from things. last year. Yep. <laughs> yep. So th these are givens. These are the givens that we've got to include. So you have to do a park run, which was pretty easy because September 1st was park run day. Um, and if okay, you can't here's do the thing. That. Nobody has to do anything. If people want to try and get bingo, these are the challenges that people need to factor into their streaks this month. Oh, but why wouldn't you, Mel? Think of the rewards that come with doing, becoming, getting streaky bingo. Yes, well, Melissa Ellis won streaky bingo last year, if I recall correctly. And now she's a member of the Channel 5 News crew. Coincidence? I don't know. And the other challenge was with a friend. Make sure you streak with a friend. Now, everyone's got friends. And if you don't have friends, you've got a month to make a friend and convince them Perfect to opportunity. A, a run or a walk with you. Now, we've got a whole bunch of new things. We've got six new things actually to add. So there are going to be eight standard challenges for Streaky Bingo to start off with. And the first of the new ones is Streaky Strava Art. We're partial to a bit of Strava art, as you may be aware, and this we don't have any rules for what the art should be, do we, Scotty? The only real sort of recommendation is that it, it's recognisable as what it's supposed to be. Does that seem fair? Absolutely. There, there are no hard and fast rules around Strava art, just as, you know, art is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, except don't just go and grab whatever park run you did last week and it's a single loop and then send it to us and tell us it's a deflated ball because you know what? That's not cool. You've got to be a bit creative with this. Okay, so what's the next one? The next one is one that you suggested. Yes. So I'll let you explain it. Yeah, because we introduced this segment a couple of weeks ago and it's it's an absolute fizzer. I, I blame um, Alan Ruck. He it just didn't, <laughs> didn't get off to a good start. But uh, we want hotline questions, and we've got one coming up a bit later on, if we ever get to it. 
So what we, we want do. you to do is while you're streaking, ask us a question and send it in. Record a hotline question. So this is going to require some uh, dexterity with not turning off, um, you know, if you're like me with your phone and you've got Strava going and you're trying to do something else at the same time, don't press stop on Strava while you're still moving. You know, just keep an eye on that sort of stuff because it happens and it deprives you of wanted kilometres and time. You know, Mel, I don't think many people actually use the app. I think you're a bit on your own there. I think most of our <laughs> listeners have got watches. Okay. Well, this is your opportunity, listeners, to write in and correct Scotty because I'm sure there are heaps of people who do it on their phone. And that's the crickets that we're all hearing. <laughs> However, hotline questions. Yes. Yeah, so if you don't know how to do it, remind everybody how to do it, Scotty. Ask us a good question. <laughs> yeah, I know, but we need them to record the audio. Oh, for yeah. It. Just, just record it into your voice memo app on your phone. Um, or you can even do it directly using Facebook Messenger. You just press the uh, audio, the microphone button, and you can ask us a question directly through Facebook Messenger. It works. Trust me. People are doing it. Yes. And uh, as we've previous, previously advised, you know, the questions don't have to be articulate or um, <laughs> parkrun related. They can be the most random thing that you're thinking about while you're out there streaking for the months. Love to have them. The next one on the list, and this this is a fave of mine, um, but we, we identified the fact that it could be a bit challenging for some people, so we, we added a little bit of a asterisk to it. So we want you to streak with a dog, with a hey. park dog or a pooch. If you don't have one or even if you do have one, instead you could potentially streak with anyone named Max, Charlie, Jack, Bella or Jesse. So if you don't have access to a dog but you've got a buddy named Max or a buddy named Jack or Charlie or Bella or Jesse, streak with them and it counts. And, you know, for um, proof, we probably want to see a selfie of you with said dog or said friend named Max, Charlie, Jack, Bella or Jesse. Yep. And I just wanted to – we also – we're going to be flexible here. If you do have a mate called Buster, Champy, Clover or Eno, we'll accept those as well. Yes. Those are – also popular dog names that could also be people. <laughs> um, the, the next, next one, one is the next one's my Scotty's concoction. Yes. yes, because I did this I think a couple of times last year, and it so was basically bit... he's looking for an easy way to get on the board. <laughs> well, it was a little bit of fun. There's a story to tell when you when you it's getting to the end of the day, you're panicking, you're going to run out of time, but if you streak after 11 p.m. That's a big tick in my book, and it's a, it's a challenge that you can tick off for bingo this year. So it's a streak after 11 p.m. Which is called the last minute streak. The next, you know what, the next two are actually also brainchilds of Scotty's, but yes. I'll introduce the next one, and he can talk us through the last one. So the next one is Groundhog Day, and for this one, we want people to run in the same time or walk same place and the same distance, um, or I should say run at the same time. So you need to start at the same time um, and do the same route that you did the day before and distance, etc. two days in a row. Yes, two days in a row. So it can't be you went to park run one week and you went back to the same park run the next week. It has to be back-to-back -back days. Yes, which you've got, you know, the whole month to, to find two back-to-back -back days where you can squeeze this one in so it shouldn't be too challenging and the last one i came up with last year we had uh, streak in your pjs which i think that was your idea mel because you never yeah, get out of your was. pjs and so this <laughs> year it came it came back on me and you know i love to run with my cap and the cap always has to be backwards so i want to see some backwards cap running some backwards cap streaking easy for the blokes i don't see too many Females running with their cap on backwards. So that's that's my main motivation there. I want to see some selfies. And I want to grow the – I just want to grow the club. Backwards cap running club. club. Is, is a backward visor acceptable? Yeah, it is. A backward visor doesn't look as good, but it is definitely acceptable. Oh, really? <laughs> that's what looks weird, a backwards, <laughs> a backwards visor. 
because there's any difference. Well, if you do it regularly and if you're in the know, there is a there is a style and there's a technique, and and we judge. And oh, okay. Yeah, it's Fair a fashion enough. statement, Mel. Okay, well, I will see what I can do about dicking out a cap. Otherwise, I may have to do my backwards cap in a visor and be subject to your judgment. So that's streaky bingo. Streaky bingo. So it's all streaky bingo. Can I bingo. just say, streaky September is going off this year. I am so excited by the amount of people that have jumped on board and are, are taking up the challenge. You know, I, I feel really proud that people are getting out there and moving and challenging themselves as part of this little thing that we set up. Yeah, well, it has a purpose too. So it's all about getting out of the funk of winter. I'll give you an example. Tonight, Mel, it got late. We we all went out as a family. Kasha and I ran together. Yvonne walked and it was lovely. You know, we had half an hour. We, we said this last year. We had half an hour outdoors. And when you finish it, you think, why don't we do this more often? So this is all about creating a habit that hopefully will carry on. I'll, I'll admit, I'll put my hand up, we didn't carry it on beyond September last year. I never said to Yvonne and Kasha, let's go for a, a 2K run or a walk beyond September. But we've got to keep doing it, Mel, because we're going we're gonna to create these habits. We're doing it all as a family again this year, and I'm hoping that everybody manages to maintain it as well. Um, Wes hasn't broken the streak yet. He's up to day four. The dogs have only been along for two of the four streaks, so they're at a 50% success rate. However, it's not really at their discretion to choose when they get to come. Uh, That's sort of not been their fault that they've missed out on a couple. However, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we can keep that strike rate up or even improve that strike rate for the rest of the month, even for the pooches. Yeah, I'm prepared to cut them a bit of slack. Because they can't understand us for starters, so they don't really and know what's not going on. Yep. yep. Although you know what, one day I'm going to just attach. In fact, I might even do it during Streaky September on the day that I streak with the dog. I might attach a watch to Clover, and we'll take her over to the dog off leash park as part of our streak, and then we'll see how many more kilometres she does than everybody else. <laughs> because that dog doesn't stop moving until really? you know she's ready to pass out. Yeah. I wouldn't have picked it. She's such a cute little dog. I thought she'd just sit around and look pretty. Oh, she looks like a fat sheep at the moment. <laughs> Actually, no, we've decided to start calling her um, uh, Toy Newfoundland because that's exactly what she looks like. She's got – she just had a bath last week, so she is 100% fuzz at the moment. It's adding about six inches to her girth. She's just like this round ball of fluff. It's ridiculous. Very soft and she smells nice, though, which is good. That's always good. Now, my boys stink at the moment. And I'm not bathing them. Oh, I, I paid somebody else to come and do it this time. Do you know how hard it is to get a dog washer in Melbourne? Like you ring everyone and it's like, I'm free in two weeks. Well, I don't know what I'm doing in two weeks. I'll call you back. And then, of course, two weeks comes and I'm not doing anything. So I could have had them. Yeah, Scotty, you work from home. Yeah, this is Just true. lock it in. This is true. <laughs> And then put it in your diary so that you make sure that you're home on that day. Well, in the moment, I think I'm really busy when I'm not. Okay. Fair enough. Hey. But hey, so so we've, we've outlined all the streaky bingo stuff, including the hotline question. But we actually got a question. We did. Sort of relatively unsolicited this week. Like, we may have reminded people about it last week. It's always good when this happens. We're excited. We're more excited about getting hotline questions than anything we've done this year. Hotline. Hi, Scott and Mel. I have a question for you. Um, You guys live in completely different states. How did you guys meet and get to the point to where you could do a podcast together? So that question came to us from a Jackie Exilan uh, of Gungalan Parkrun. Uh, Jackie has very kindly explained to me how to pronounce Gungalan, uh, even though I'm pretty sure we've mentioned that one in the podcast before. However, she didn't tell me how to pronounce her surname. So Jackie, I apologize in advance if I got that wrong. I also suffer from a surname that people do not commonly pronounce correctly. 
Really? So I feel I feel your pain. Yes. Hey, Rebecca. My brother in law got he graduated from university and he had his graduation ceremony, cap and gown, full kit and caboodle, and somebody said, Ryan Urbacher. <laughs> <laughs> And because yeah, we, we saw the video of it. And, and so we said, oh, yeah, you know, same old, same old. And he said, well, actually, it's not as bad as this other girl who the person in front of her didn't show up. So she got introduced to some boy's name. <laughs> <laughs> and she's walking across the stage not looking impressed. <laughs> well, what is it? She just wait for her name to be called. What does she go Well, that's when... what I would have done. Yeah. I would have just stood there and waited to. Why anyway. would you go up and accept it under someone else's name? That's fraud. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she probably took the correct degree, the one with her name on it. Hmm. Hey, none of this answers Jackie's question. And we've also got to mention Jackie's a bit under the weather. So she apologizes for a croaky voice. But Jackie wants to know uh, how you and I met Scotty and, and at what point or how did it come about that we are podcast co hosts? But I'm going to let you answer this, Mel, because I think I've told the story before on the podcast. But let's let's rehash it in a different tone. Well, how how did we actually meet? Though was the first time we met in Victoria at the Ron Clark Memorial Service? It could have been in person. It could have been. Yep. I I think it may have been. So that's where we met in person for the first time. Uh, however, Scotty and I were both part of the original intake of uh, a group of volunteers for Parkrun Australia called Territory Directors. And, oh God, I think there was only about a dozen of us at that stage. Um, yeah, I think there was. There was a couple from each state, yeah. Yeah, and um, some states or territories didn't have any at all still at that stage. Uh, it's it's grown and it's now sort of um, morphed into an ambassador, a, a an event ambassador program is, is what they get called instead, territory directors. Um, but as as part of that sort of volunteer group, we we were added to a private group on Facebook. And I guess, um, you know, sharing knowledge and, and experiences and things like that in that group is probably where we, we first started to get to know each other a bit. Um, you know, it's, it's quite a small group. So when everybody chimes in, you know, it's it, that's how you start to build friendships. And Mel was very sensible with all her answers, and I like oh, sensible people. Oh, is that what it was? I was sensible, <laughs> not no, cheeky far from or it. obnoxious. <laughs> no, I think Mel had a sense of humour that I liked. So I, I think I reached out to you and said, "Let's do this thing together," and we did. And this is this is the way of the world, Mel. I'll I'll tell another story. With technology now, you can be friends with anyone, anywhere. And and my, my good mate's daughter, I heard a story on the weekend. Her best friend lives in Coffs Harbour. And and they met up on the weekend in Melbourne. Now I find that, that concept bizarre because my best friend was the guy was the family I was living next door to for ten years. So we've been best friends. He was the best man at my wedding. But now my, my daughter will have best friends on um, social media, I'm sure, in the next few years, all her YouTube buddies. I don't know how it works. I'm an old man. But that's how we stay connected. Even though Mel's in Queensland and I'm in Melbourne, we talk every day and we, we text every day on all the socials, on all the platforms. So it's quite easy to stay connected. Yeah, I think I, think I reached out to a couple of people when I wanted to bring the podcast, bring a podcast back, and Mel was always my first choice. So I'm really glad that she said yes. At least that's the story he tells people. It, and I, <laughs> hand on heart, Mel, it always is. It always is. You were always uh, number one. So he's lucky I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, no, actually, I don't think you're so much lucky I said yes, is that um, I think it's turned out okay. Yeah, you know, I'm, we, I'm pretty we, happy. We, we have enough to talk about every week. Um, or at least, you know, we make drivel up sometimes. But, yeah, I think it's turned out okay. Yeah, and I think also, like, I think I'm, my voice is quite unique and, and so is yours and we, we contrast quite a bit. Even though we're very similar in a lot of our thinking, I think we've got a lot enough contrast there um, to keep people mildly amused or to, to, to hate me and love you and vice versa because that's what you need with a dynamic. 
are we being a bit self-indulgent now? Like, are Maybe. we cutting ourselves? <laughs> yeah. We probably could answer that in 30 seconds. But um, that's where the hotline takes us. Yes. And we said there's no guest today, so you're getting to know us a bit more. Speaking of getting to know us a bit more, my battery on my laptop says 5% left, so this <laughs> podcast good. may end at any moment. No, no, let's end it now. Let's end it now. As, as we mentioned, we're going to be puck running together on the weekend. It's a new event for both of us, which I'm a little bit gutted about, but I'll still look forward to it. Because you're not going to get ahead of me. Yeah, because I still can't get ahead of you, but I, I got one closer on the weekend, so that made me happy. You did, you did, and you know, like... You're going to have to get on top of that because I'm chasing down quite a few more by the end of the year as well. Yep. Good luck with that. <laughs> Thanks again to Jackie for contributing to the hotline. We can't wait to see what everybody comes up with with Streaky Bingo and all the fun stuff. We actually will be back with a guest next week. Um, so please make sure you come back and have another listen. And to end, which is a new tradition, so... The sing-along returned last week, Mel. Yeah, it just and wasn't the same though, it, Scotty, was it? So this is – let's make the decision now. We haven't – again, we haven't pre-planned this. But I always wanted to – it needed to have a Tiffany song. The sing-along wasn't complete without having Tiffany's I Think We're Alone Now. My, my karaoke song of choice, my little teenage crush – I wasn't even a teenager. She was like – the first, I think she Tiffany was the first girl that I thought. Oh, I think she's. I think she's pretty good. She's a bit all right. Yeah. Um. So, I, I, th- I think we should probably just end it there. I mean, it was a terrible version. It was. It. It just. Yeah. It just wasn't quite the same. I. I think. I think it really has to stop there. Yep. So don't blame us. Blame the corporate greed of big music. And one day, one day, Mel, we'll have a lawyer. Or we'll have enough sponsors that we can buy off these. We can pay the We can pay big music. Yeah, we can, we can. <laughs> so this is just going to peter out with our theme music. Try and sing along to that. I'll let it play a bit longer this week.